Every couple of years, we are treated to a new Mizuno forged blade. The blade has actually gotten even smaller, more compact, softer in feel, and more solid at impact. Those that love blades and will always continue to play blades focus on two key things when it comes to why they use that particular style of club. They're looking for a very, very compact, thin top line, thin sole, softest possible feel at impact. And when it comes to this particular blade, that's really what Mizuno's focus has been. They've made the actual entire shape of the iron smaller, we've thinned out the top line a little bit, and we've put a little bit more mass specifically behind the actual strike location. Now, the ideal strike location, which is the middle of the face. Definitely not going to be helping you when you hit it heel side and toe side, but if you're concerned about forgiveness, this is probably not the iron you should be using anyway. Nice one to start. Ooh, nice soft feel, obviously. There is probably no real value in me telling you that a Mizuno blade struck pretty well with a softball like a Pro V1 should feel pretty good. Can also tell you that when you almost top it, it hurts the hands a bit, stings the hands. That's feeling nice. Oy, that is nice. It's a pretty nice one again. Very solid. And with the blade, you know, we're looking at efficiency numbers that are obviously not that high. So for almost 100 miles an hour at club head speed with a pretty good strike and a good amount of shaft lean, we're still not going to get uh, much more than maybe 133 to 135 miles an hour ball speed. 34 degrees aloft here, we've got a solid piece of forged metal. No additional kind of ball speed help as it's supposed to be. Basically, it is on you to produce the launch conditions with your skill. And these produce really, really nice flights. I would say for me, as long as I'm leaning the shaft enough at impact the way I want to be as long as I'm compressing the ball well I'm actually able to keep the peak height of these in a reasonable range often for me at my speed the peak height gets a little excessive and some of that is bad technique but also some of that can be the lower center of gravity irons that at times I'm testing man they sound good and feel good we will see a pretty tight dispersion of peak heights which basically tells you that the launch angle was very consistent, which we can see from this low variance number here. When we look at the front to back dispersion of those shots, even when you pull them a little bit, which a couple of those were, we're not air mailing greens because blades have a tendency to maintain spin, even when you get the face a touch more shut. So to be honest, there's probably not a whole lot of things I could tell you that would be all that revolutionary when it comes to reviewing a new model of a Mizuno blade. They look fantastic, they feel fantastic, they sound fantastic. The address position is about as good as you could ask for. It's not the tiniest blade in the world, which I kind of like. Um, top line's very thin still, there's almost no offset there. Really nice kind of rounded shape at the toe. Uh, lovely transition between the hosel and sort of that leading edge of the face. Uh, sole width is fairly thin, but it's not excessively thin. I mean, there's just really, there's nothing negative to say about this, other than the fact that it pretty much fits uh, the tiniest percentage of golfers that you can imagine. But if you are a connoisseur of blades, uh, Japanese forgings, Mizuno, and even this year, if you are a lefty, I would tell you, you will not be remotely disappointed with this new 241 model. It is, uh, it's extremely nice. But if you are a little bit more of a realist about your ball striking ability, and you want to play something that will actually help you hit the ball a little bit further, a little bit higher, and actually forgive you on those poor strikes, Mizuno's got something that is almost as good looking as the blade, but has a lot more performance to it. So the 245 model is the latest version of what originated as the HMB, the hot metal blade. It's a hollow body club, believe it or not. And when you look at it, it is kind of hard to tell how there's a hollow chamber in here. And this year's hollow body club, much like the blade they've created, is the most compact version that they've created to date. 
even in the little bit more game improvement category that the 245 is. The feedback that Mizuno gets, and I hear it all the time when I'm fitting people, is I want a really good looking, not too big golf club, not too much offset, not too big of a sole, but I don't want to uh, lose 20 yards when I tow it, and I don't want to lose a club of distance. Uh, I want to get basically the game improvement performance out of a club that looks a lot more like the blade. Now, from an engineering perspective, that's obviously been pretty challenging, but I think over the last three generations, Mizuno has slowly been slimming down this iron more and more to the point where now it's very hard to tell between the 245 and the 241 blade, except for the little 245 logo on there that helps you differentiate between the two. It sounds like, however, due to some advancements with the actual forging process and the relationship they have with their forging house in Japan, they've been able to create a little bit of a different construction than was previously possible within the manufacturing process. So they've actually added more tungsten to the internal construction of the head, and it's a little bit lower in the face. So you're actually getting a slightly more forgiving golf club, if anything, a thinner face, more actual ball speed coming off the face. Even though the club got smaller, the performance apparently got better. Ooh. Okay, so that's rather different, rather different. We obviously have a lot more ball speed now and a lot less spin, and we're gonna carry the ball quite a lot further. So yes, I know what you're gonna say, and you're not entirely wrong. We got a lot less loft here. Isn't this basically just a six iron? Eh, kinda sorta. Um, the important things when it comes to hitting an iron is can you hit it a bit further with maintaining the peak height? So if you look at the peak height on that shot, if anything, I actually hit this ball further in the air than I did with the blade. I hit it higher. So the ability for it to stop on the green will be pretty much unchanged. Yes, it has less spin, but the angle it's coming at is so steep, probably not gonna matter much anyway. Did pull that a tad, and yeah, we are somewhat uh, punished for um, shutting down the loft a little bit and kind of nuking it. Now, it's not really the iron's fault. I shut the face. It wasn't the best swing on my part, but when it comes to an iron with this construction versus a blade, yes, when you pull one a little bit with a stronger lofted club with a little bit hotter face, the front to back dispersion is going to be different than it would be with a blade with more loft and really nothing much going on with the face. You would have to assess how often do I actually hit it over the green? How often am I short? If you're more often short, then a club like this that offers you way more forgiveness and way more ball speed and distance on average will probably benefit you more than worrying about the occasional shot that you kind of get a little bit past the pin. That was really nice too. Woo! Obviously not as soft as the blade, but when it comes to a hollow bodied iron, I mean, I've only made a few swings here. Um, I'm having a hard time thinking of anything I've tried that's hollow, that feels this soft and sounds that nice and muted. And that's really the main drawback for people when it comes to, I want to go with a hollow body iron. I want the distance. I want the forgiveness. And I want the looks, obviously. Um, but I don't like the clicky sound. I don't like the kind of harsher feel. I mean, it's, it's awfully good. <laughs> Now, if we look at that shot specifically, I am going to try to appease the critics of stronger lofts here and I have to agree to a certain amount that this is basically uh, a six iron flight for me. I would expect around that amount of ball speed. I would expect around that kind of uh, peak height and spin rate. It is basically functioning a little bit more like a six iron, but I am using a golf ball that was a little bit more suited to the higher loft and less tech uh, technologically advanced face of the blade. I'm using a Pro V1 uh, which is a little bit of a lower spin uh, ball off of the irons. So how do I take that flight, which in total fairness is a little bit hot for a seven iron, how do I kind of dial that back just a touch, maintaining the speed, but adding a little bit of spin? Hmm, that is different. So changing the ball has really changed the flight but we've added seven, 800 RPMs of spin, which is gonna stabilize the flight. It's obviously gonna help it have a little bit even more stopping power on the green. And at my speed, this is a little bit more of an appropriate uh, ball flight for what we wanted of a seven iron. 
And I will say, even with the firmer ball, which this is quite a bit firmer than a Pro V1, this iron still feels quite soft. Now, obviously, a softer compression ball like the Pro V1, I think, will give you the best chance of really liking the feel of this club. It is a very soft club, but something to consider. And uh, when we talked about those higher spin balls, specifically, this uh, Strixon Z Star Diamond would be a softer compression ball that spins quite a bit. Now, you may not see your highest ball speeds out of that, as we know from a lot of different testing. The firmer, higher spin ball will often give people the most height. Man, 207 carry. 207 carry with 6,000 spin and 120 feet of peak height. Even if you want to go a little more traditional in loft, these are a little strong, obviously, by some people's standards. You could weaken these a degree or two. It would even take a little bit more offset out from a dress, which would help your aesthetics even more. Already good looking, but would help even more. And you could even just ever so slightly soften the flight while maintaining all the forgiveness of the iron. Um, but again, it depends on how much dynamic loft you deliver. So for me, with this iron right now, yeah, I'm delivering a very low amount of dynamic loft uh, for a seven iron, it's at 20 degrees. I prefer to see mine around 23 or 24. But for me to play these wouldn't be totally out of the question, uh, particularly in the mid to long irons. I would probably soften the, the lofts just a tad. Um, but in terms of how they look, they feel, they perform, I think a lot of people are going to like these. Let's see what these things are capable of, shall we? <laughs> wow. 210 carry, 144 miles an hour ball speed. 135 feet in the air. As a lefty, I don't get the kind of uh, MP245 every year. I kind of seem to get it every other year, obviously. Part of me has forgotten how good these actually are. And I think over time, Mizuno has slimmed the profile of these a little bit every uh, time they release a new version of it. To the point where with these, I would say uh, they're just about as good as it gets when it comes to hollow body irons. I think performance wise, there's gonna be other irons in this category that will give you a very similar ball flight. But if you are really particular about the aesthetics of a club and how something looks at a dress and even in the bag uh, is a big factor in you kind of staying with old technology for longer, this might just be the iron that kind of breaks you out of that habit.